Hi guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. This is the video for the Q&A for the bearing stick. I called it truing up a part with a ball bearing. And I just got a lot of great positive responses I just want to read to you. Mike Crowell, thank you, very useful tip. John Bazaar, what a cool idea. Lewis McLean, great job, thanks. Wesley Barnhill, nice. Neil Smith, great illustration. And it was a fun video to produce, and it was just so quick to show you how to line up a part on the lathe. Um, some other comments that came in, uh, some great suggestions. Here's one from Chris O'Tube. As a tool maker for many years, I've used this technique a lot. Just, just like to add another tip, that if such a bearing tool is not available, you can substitute it with a low friction material to rub directly against the stock. I often use brass or bronze or copper to do the same thing, even plastic when those materials are scarce. What Chris is talking about is you can actually take a material like this plastic, put it in your tool holder like it's a tool, and use this to line up a part. He talked about using brass or bronze. Another trick is something woodworkers will do on band saws to guide the blade on a band saw is they'll actually take oak and soak it in WD-40 and that gives it a non-friction surface. So great, great tip. Roger Gimble was really curious about one thing. Such a simple and effective idea, of course talking about the bearing stick, I wish it was mine. But what he goes on to talk about is that jumbo face, probably three inches, must make seeing the numbers much easier. I've used indicators several years back and really dislike the tiny faced ones. Boy, I agree with you, because I've got some small ones. What he's talking about is this dial indicator here. Just beautiful. The face of it is three inches across. Easy to read, it's accurate to a thousandths of an inch. But let me show you one of my favorites. Is this Ames. The Ames is three and a half inches across. It's accurate to ten thousandths of an inch. So this thing is a very detailed gauge. Very easy to read. The only drawback is, well, it's been around for a while, so it needs some repairs. So I'm going to do a video on cleaning this up. And I'm going to take some shortcuts that may drive some people a little crazy. But what I'm going to do in that video, well, I promise you it won't hurt it. Something else I'm very excited about, Metal Tips and Tricks has a new sponsor. Let me show you the commercial. Do you have a problem with wobbly parts on your lathe? Can't quite get that new part into the chuck? Well, with bearing on a stick, that problem is eliminated in seconds. Simply slide it onto your existing tool post, bring it right into that wobbly part. Trues that part up in a matter of seconds. But that's not all, folks. Watch what it does with the disc. Silly install the disc into your lathe. Doesn't have to be lined up correctly because you've got bearing on a stick. Bring it into that wobbly part. Trues up that disc in a matter of seconds. Bearing on a stick from MTNT Products. Available nowhere. <laughs> I thought you guys might enjoy that. Just a little bit of fun there. Motor Wanderer um, has a great story in here I want to share with you guys. Hi Dale, I used to work in a shop, oh, some 20 years ago, and one of these old timers showed us this trick. However, we used an old knurling holder with two bearings to align it vertically and horizontally. We also got greedy and built one with big bearings for the big Lodgley Shipley, but a few times big stock got flung around the shop and we stopped using it, smiley face. <laughs> that is a great story. You know, at the end of my last video, you saw how it got out of the chuck and fell off. And well, you can go back and check that other video to see that. And it would be frightening to have a big piece of steel 
come off the lathe. So uh, I really appreciate that story. Now for the YouTuber of the week. YouTuber of the week is old education videos. Now, he's not a YouTuber, it's just a YouTube channel, sorry. Have to give me some flexibility here in the name, YouTuber of the week. It's a great YouTube channel. And what this gentleman did, he took some old BBC videos of technology that were done back in the 70s. So these videos are a little funky, a little odd, but wonderful to watch. And it's, the series is called BBC Technical Studies. And it goes into different aspects of materials and how to manipulate them and use them in different machinery. They talked about welding. And one of the things I've always wanted to know the difference between short circuit, MIG welding, and spray MIG welding. And they did such a great job of explaining the different technology behind them. And I've always been curious, so I got that answered. Also talks about die casting joinery and fastening and different materials. One of them, it talks about how they designed a drill bit. And it's just fascinating old technology. And remember, mid-70s is right when computers started to, get, started to get involved into the machine shops, and they touch on some of that. And it's just some great nostalgia there and also some fabulous education. It has about 900 subscribers. 33 videos, and the videos each last about 25 minutes, but they're really well done. So, well worth checking out old education videos, and there will be a link in the bottom of this. Well, there we go, another Q&A. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give me some thumbs up if you did, and until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. my parts don't line up in my chuck. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to get ball bearing on a stick. That's right, from our friends at MT&T Products. You simply slide it right onto your existing tool post. Bring it right into that rotating part until it is perfectly lined up. And there you go. Ball bearing on a stick from the great creators at MT&T Products.